Hey, I'm Allison, a registered dietitian with Flick Hospitality Group, and today I am going to talk to you and show you how to make a broccoli slaw that includes the stems of the broccoli, the stems of the cauliflower, and some carrot, as well as a really great homemade dressing. This will be a super simple recipe that's really nice to have as a side for maybe a cookout or uh, to put on top of a salad. It's a good way to use up any of your uh, produce that you have in the fridge and then also make sure that you are helping to prevent food waste because we're gonna use the stems. So we're gonna start first by making our dressing. It's going to include a mayonnaise because we are making a slaw. So this is a mayonnaise based slaw. Also apple cider vinegar, some salt, pepper, a little bit of sugar as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start by mixing up the dressing. This is uh, using a light mayonnaise. I'm gonna use a quarter cup of this mayonnaise. Put this into a bowl. All right. Now we're also gonna do a quarter cup of the apple cider vinegar. And I'm also going to use one and a half teaspoons of sugar. This helps just to cut uh, some of that tartness from that vinegar. So you can uh, adjust this to taste this is really all about, um, you know, however you would like to have it taste. So really up to you, the amounts that you put in. Same goes uh, for the salt and pepper. Of course, if you adjust to the salt, then that's going to greatly impact the sodium. Um, for this recipe, we're doing half a teaspoon of salt. And then um, the recipe actually calls for a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I am just gonna eyeball this and make it to taste. So the black pepper is not gonna add any sodium. This really is just all about what you would like. So once you have that, I'm just gonna whisk it and make a nice dressing. Super simple. All right, so we're finished with our dressing. I'm gonna set this aside. Now, the next thing I'm going to make is I'm actually gonna prepare the vegetables. So I have a broccoli here that I'm going to cut off the florets and just use the stem so I can steam the florets for later. Um, I have a cauliflower, all of this has been washed. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, cut off the tops and then just use the stem. And then I'm going to show you how to julienne the uh, carrot here. So let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm just going to cut off the ends of these because they get a little bit dry. And I uh, just want to make sure that you're really careful when using your knife that you are avoiding your fingers at all costs. So what I'm doing is actually just trimming off the florets here, putting this on the cutting board and making sure that I'm going down with the knife, not up towards my fingers. And these florets are gonna be used in something later. So I'm gonna set those to the side. All we have are the stems left here. So there's a couple of things that you can do. I actually have a mandolin that has this really nice little uh, julienne attachment that I can rub this stem across the mandolin to get the julienne pieces. The other alternative I can show you on the cauliflower is to actually cut into julienne slices. So if you've ever used a mandolin, we'll start with that. This is a good little attachment that just helps to protect your fingers. So I don't want to cut my fingers, of course. So this is a, sometimes I think it can be a little bit easier. It depends on how sharp your mandolin is. But as 
essentially, this is just getting right down there to, I can show you what this looks like here, these pieces. So it's almost like it's matchsticks, which is really great. Um, so once I'm done with that, let me show you on this cauliflower how I'm actually going to cut this cauliflower into um, similar kind of fashion matchsticks here. So the first thing that you should do is just cut it in half. So once you cut the stem in half, you're gonna put the flat side down and that's gonna keep it from rolling on your cutting board. Um, and then from there, you're just going to cut straight down. Hopefully you can see this. Keeping your fingers so that they're, they're curled away from the knife. Creating these thin, flat pieces. Once you get about to the center, you can actually turn that over, turn it around, do the same thing. So you're now I'm getting these wide, flat pieces. And then once you have the wide, flat pieces, so you can see it looks like this, then I'm actually just going to cut straight down that way. So same thing, end up with little match sticks. So I'm gonna do the entire stem. Some of them are, you can stack on top of each other. Makes it pretty quick. And if you don't know, Earth Month is in April. Food waste is something that um, is pretty serious here in the, in the US. We have a problem with it and it's important that we do what we can to try to prevent food waste. And this type of recipe where you're actually using the entire vegetable is really helpful when it comes to food waste so that you're not throwing anything out. And the nice thing about this too is it's going to marinate with the dressing. So it gives it a little bit of time to help to soften these, these stems that can sometimes be a little bit tough. If you're looking for another way to use up stems, you might try something similar where you can have the same type of cut, maybe a little bit uh, thicker and make fries essentially. So what I will often do with some of my stems from broccoli, if I'm using the florets to steam or in a different type of uh, recipe, then I will actually take the stems, cut them into fries, and then I can toss them with a little bit of uh, maybe cornmeal or some type of seasoning and you can roast them in the, the oven at a high temperature until they're cooked through and they get kind of crispy. So it's a nice way to, another way to use them up and you can call them broccoli fries, which is fun for kids. Um, so they usually taste really great too. But you can roast them alongside any type of dish, maybe a one pan type of roasting dish um, that you could get. Lots of great recipes on the Flick blog if that's something that you have been able to check out. It's a really great resource. All right. So, mixing all of this, putting this all in a bowl here. I'm gonna have a couple different textures for this because I use two different ways of, of cutting. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the same with the carrots. So the thing about carrots is obviously they're round and that can be a problem if you are wanting to avoid cutting your fingers, which hopefully you do. So we don't want to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is actually cut off the ends. And then from there, I'm actually just going to cut this in half just to kind of make it a little bit more manageable. So there's a couple of things that you can do with this. You can either cut one end or you can cut it in half. I like to cut it in half being really careful not to cut your fingers here. Again, flat side down. And so I'm just gonna do the same thing, but the flat side down is to prevent it from rolling. And you'll see once I get to the middle, then I can turn it over 
and do the same thing on the other side. And then you have those flat, wide pieces. If they're still a little bit too big, you cut them in half. But just trying to get that matchstick, skinny little pieces. So we're gonna do an entire carrot as well. Carrots are also really nice if you wanna just cut it up and have it as a little snack while you're making dinner or whatever it is that you're making, lunch. It's also incredibly important that you have a nice sharp knife when you're doing this. Um, that's actually gonna make things much easier for you is to ensure that you have a nice sharp knife that you're not pressing down too hard that it cuts through really easily. So some of these are a little big. I'm just going to cut them in half. All right, so you will get through the whole carrot and I will do that. So before I started, um, I toasted some pumpkin seeds and how I did that is you actually take raw pumpkin seeds and you can either put them on a pan at, in the oven at 350 degrees, or you can actually put them on a stove top, like in a frying pan, and then just uh, toast them that way and they'll get a little bit fragrant. So in the oven, it's about five to seven minutes. Um, so for this recipe, toasted pumpkin seeds. So we're gonna use that as well as uh, we have some nice dried cranberries. So we have the dressing already made. And what I'm gonna do after I have taken my my slaw here this is it is chopped up ready to go i'm going to add in the pumpkin seeds so we're doing two tablespoons of pumpkin seeds pumpkin seeds are a really great source of magnesium and then i'm also going to do a quarter cup of the uh, dried cranberries so I'm gonna use my quarter cup measure here. And then once I have that all mixed up, I'm going to add in the dressing. And this, you'll mix it well, and this will marinate in the fridge for about 30 minutes. You wanna make sure that you keep it in the refrigerator to marinate. It's helpful to keep it at the proper temperature to ensure food safety. So it's going in the fridge. That's it. Let us know what you think. I'll make sure that uh, we have our recipe posted for you and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.